press the bell icon on the YouTube app and never miss another update. Hello students, welcome back to your social science class. Today we are going to continue the chapter socialization and we shall wind it up today. We shall uh, finish the last portion that's there, functions and roles of uh, social institutions and it's in, given in divisions. I hope you have read how much we have already finished and are ready for uh, the next portion that we are going to deal with. So today we are going to deal with the functions and role of social institutions. functions and roles of social institution. Now uh, we have discussed or uh, we have dealt with what is the process of socialization and how it helps its members. We have studied uh, the features, where is it present, what are its characteristics basically, the nature of socialization. On the other hand, we also studied why socialization or social institutions are important. Okay. Why social institutions are important and what is the process of having it. Today we will study uh, why each society functions in a particular way and what are their particular roles. So every society that is present has a social institution, be it family, be it marriage, be it schools and colleges, be it religion, be it law. Okay, anywhere you go, these social institutions are present. That is why in the features it was said it is universal. That is, it's present everywhere. Not a single uh, community anywhere doesn't have a family. Something not like that. But everybody has a family. So that is present everywhere. Now, uh, we dealt with saying that it fulfills our basic needs. It fulfills our, it fulfills on a general view the needs of all human beings. So we have uh, studied about how our personality develops, what kind of behavioral changes that are uh, done. Now, first function of the family is nourishment of the members. So first function. nourishment of its members. Now if you put a seed in the soil and if it, if it has to take its form, it, if it has to grow into a sapling, it has to shoot out, you have to look after it, you have to nourish it, you have to put water to it, okay, you have to keep it in certain places, okay, maybe where sunlight is required, some plants don't require that much of sunlight, depending on what kind of plant it is. For a small baby say you will have to nourish the baby also, give the baby right food to eat, okay, right amount of water, right amount of sleep, you are nourishing the baby. You are providing your uh, supplements which help in the growth. What is the supplement with the plant? You are providing water there, okay, you are providing manure there and that is the nourishment you are giving. Certain uh, natural fertilizers are put. Okay, that's nourishment. What kind of nourishment do societies do uh, to human beings? Now, first one is family. Family is assigning all its roles. Family nourishes you. As you are small, a, a just born baby, the family looks after you. Family looks after everything that is needed. Maybe your food, maybe your clothing, maybe your shelter. Basic needs are fulfilled in the family. It is nourishing you. Alright, each member of the family is acting according to their roles. The grandparents play their role, the parents play their role, your older siblings play their role, okay, your relatives play, the, relatives play, play their role, everything is put into place and everybody's role is defined. 
Now the basic role of the family is to look after each other, to care for each other and to nourish them, okay, to make them better, to help them grow, alright. Now, grandparents are there, we, uh, three generations, let us take three generations, grandparents, parents and children. Now parents are going to work, let's assume, the grandparents take the responsibility of the child, Okay, sometimes grandparents may go on an outing, parents take the responsibility. So they are sharing their roles, yet what are they doing? The basic only thing of taking care of the baby. The baby goes and the next baby is in the house, the oldest sibling takes the responsibility, some kind of responsibility that is there. Then uh, another child, two oldest siblings are there, okay? So this is how it revolves. The grandparents are there, parents are there, oldest siblings are there. So this is how it is revolving, they are taking their roles, they are exchanging their roles in their own ways. Now even when uh, elder parents, uh, elderly grandparents are sick or elderly par grandparents need help, the family assists them. So basically on an overview, everybody is taking care, everybody is nourishing each one's needs. Next is security and socialization. security and socialization. What is socialization? We mingling with people, we getting along with people, okay? That is the process of socialization. Now, Initially, where are you talking to? Whom are you talking to? Where are you interacting? You are interacting in your family. You are interacting with the people in and around you. You learn to talk, you learn to walk, you learn to eat, you learn to do everything basically with the, just with people around you. Maybe your parents, grandparents, older siblings. So this is the first set of people you encounter as you are growing. After which you get into the uh, society and the neighborhood, you will uh, have your neighbors, you will have your friends there, you will have elders there in the neighborhood, okay. Then you go a little apart from that, you have your school and there you have your teachers, you have uh, your principal, you have your friends, okay. Then you are growing up and you are going into work and then there is a different group there. So every phase of life you are meeting different kinds of people who all are belonging to where you belong. Where is that? The society. So your interaction, your communication is necessary at every phase that you are crossing. Now basically you learn to talk. Once you learn to talk, you are also taking your role in the family. Then when you go to your neighborhood, your friends are there. When you go out for games there, when you go out for playing, you interact, you communicate. That is socialization, okay, interacting with the society and uh, the family is educating the children in whatever way they have to do. Now your family also provides you security, security in terms of taking care of you and not having any harmful uh, things done on you, okay, making you safe in whatever way they can, making you safe within that atmosphere that is there keeping you safe, keeping you under sudden care, keeping you under guidance, okay? So that's kind of security is provided. Along with that, they're also teaching you certain skills, they're also teaching you uh, personality, uh, personality traits, they're also teaching you certain behavioral uh, attitudes that are needed, okay? Some kind of good behavior and that, that behavior that is not acceptable by people in and around you. Now, they are preparing you. When you are a child, this security, nourishment, personality, behavior, whatever, okay, we'll put it etc. They are preparing you for this, this society, to face the society as adults. When you're growing up from children to adults, uh, the family is supporting you, family is framing you in that way. Okay, so these are the two. Uh, functions of family, alright, functions of, this is family. Two functions of family. Second is 
functions of marriage. Okay, you write it as A and B. Don't get confused. Write B here. Write A here. Family, you put it as one. Marriage, you put it as two. What is the function of marriage? Okay. First function is social sanction. social sanction. Now, marriage is also an important uh, aspect of the society. Um, it's, it's come from the tradition and we have certain traditions, we have to, uh, certain beliefs and values regarding marriage. Now, it also provides you uh, a phase for life where a man and a woman uh, come together and stay together okay this is this is a kind of relationship that is shared by uh, two adults man and woman who are uh, taking on who take on the responsibility of the future generation okay marriage is uh, the basic phase which is giving you an entry to your family life so with the marriage begins the uh, family that is passing on for other generation that is there your generation is being you are taking on the next generation so responsibilities uh, are included along with marriage. Now, man and woman who come together, a couple, they have everything to share together, okay, everything to stay in the family, to take on the responsibilities of their children, to make everything good for whatever is happening. Then they stay together, they lead uh, all, all their things together, that is religious life, your economic life, okay, your, uh, your cultural life, all is uh, put together and shared by man and woman and the family that they uh, have, okay. Now marriage is also as old as human civilization and it has been passed on. Now in the growing world, uh, there is a choice of not getting married or getting married, but let's take getting married because it has come down and we are talking about tradition. So it has come down and after a certain age, a uh, man and a woman as adults decide that they will have to uh, share their lives together, that they will have to get into a relationship, an institution that is designed by the society. Now, uh, that kind of marriage, what kind of traditions they believed in marriage at that point has changed over the years now. Uh, and marriage has taken a different role uh, in the coming days where uh, patriarchy doesn't seem to dominate much. Uh, yet there are people, there are people who still believe in not empowering the woman who comes to their house. But certain families are... Uh, too good, okay, too good where they are open-minded, they understand the needs of the girl coming to their house. So marriage has taken a different role over the years. Next is, it's a base for family. Okay, this is A. Base for family. Now, I told you with marriage begins a next family, that is the next generation that is there, okay? Uh, uh, both man and woman are involved in procreation, in nourishing the child, in taking responsibility of bringing up the child, okay? All that happens within the family. There may be grandparents to uh, aid them, okay? Great-grandparents may be there. But basic responsibility is taken by the man and the woman who have joined in marriage, that is father and mother who uh, have their children. Now, marriage uh, creates unity between, um, marriage also brings people together of two different communities also, okay, because two people, uh, we in India don't believe uh, a man and woman only uh, sharing their lives together, but we believe that two families become one, okay? Both from the girl and the boy's side, we believe that two families are getting together. So there is unity there, there is sharing, and that family bond uh, increases there. 
So that's what we believe in India, isn't it? Two families getting together, not only the man and the woman, unlike the Western countries. So this is how it's uh, bringing people from different communities. Maybe uh, uh, it has brought two families together who are of different cultural aspects. Maybe uh, different uh, um, practices, different traditions. Now, if somebody from the south has married somebody from the north, okay, there are differences of opinion, differences of culture there. But it's only important how you accept it. How you take that person within your family or how you let that person go to another family. So, it's very important to accept the cultures that are across our, uh, across our boundaries. Let's not limit ourselves to our boundaries alone. Let's get out and understand that they have their own traditions, which we can also participate. It's a learning process. You see, if, if somebody has married somebody from the north, what's wrong in that? You have learned their culture. You have learned their food habits. You've learned their dressing. It's an addition for your learning. It's addition of your knowledge. You can visit that place now because it's your family that is connected. So this is a base for family. Legal sanctity in relationship. Legal sanctity in in relationship. Okay, what's legal sanctity in a uh, relationship and this is what I told you it's not only a relationship between a man and a woman but two families two different families uh, joined together to become one to become one family they are not separate anymore but they are together they become one now uh, legal sanctity meaning you have now when you have a child okay the child has rights over the property is the higher to the throne when the kings were there now here he is the higher to the uh, the property that you have. Everything that is documented will go to your children. All right. Now it's distribution of both the families. Uh, that's uh, how they have divided it. How? But basic understanding is children have the right over their parents' properties, and that's that goes on in uh, in the future. Okay. But families can choose not to give it to their children or give it to their children. That's the opinion of the parents. But basic understanding is just like the kings and the queens yes, used to have the son as the higher to the throne. Here in the modern world, both girls and boys are higher to the property that is there. Uh, now, the society will only continue if there is marriage and if there are families. We'll only grow, we'll only... Uh, I'm not saying in terms of increasing in population, but uh, the communities that are there, the traditions that are there will only be kept alive if families are done. If families are present, if uh, people uh, in and around believe in the same thing, your traditions, your values, your beliefs, your cultural aspects will always remain alive. But if the entire world chooses not to get married, we may have friendships. That's a different, uh, uh, different way of looking at the society. We may, we may socialize, we may talk with people. After all, we will be only alone, left alone. So family is the base, marriage is the base for the family. So that's how uh, uh, the society in, for, a, for a lot of ages believes in this. Now, even marriage has its own uh, rules. Okay, it's guided by rules and regulations. It has certain laws and uh, it has certain age limits also for the boys and the girls to get married. Before that age, it is child marriage uh, and it's not supposed to get married. Now, um, girls' age is increased to 21, uh, though 21 is still a less number, but the government feels so that uh, 21 is all right than 18. So it's being changed now for a girl. So that is how it's decided and uh, it's taken forward. Okay, after that it is to, to the uh, thought of the boy and the girl who would like to get into marriage. So, but legal laws are there in case of separation, in case of uh, getting along, 
so everything has rules and regulations laid down by the government. Next we'll see uh, religion. Third one is religion. I'll write all the points, okay? First one is socialization. Second one is social unity. I'll write all of them and then I'll explain. Social unity, protection of values. Social control. Okay. Now, socialization. Religion also gives you an aspect to mingle with people. Religion also has its own practices. Okay. Let us not get in detail of any religion, but every religion has their own beliefs and thoughts. But religion also gives you a process to uh, interact with people. Now don't you meet people of your religion, don't you meet your community and celebrate some, celebrate a festival, okay, organize something. You are interacting, you are meeting people then, alright. Now it teaches you peace, it teaches you love, it teaches you sacrifice, okay, truthfulness and patience through all your customs and rituals that are to be done. To all things that have been learned by religion and what you practice in it has something to say. Maybe your holy books, holy books say certain things, okay? Uh, if you've read any or any one of the holy books, most of them focus on uh, accepting a human being as he is, love, love your neighbor, love everybody who is there, okay? Care for them. Every, I don't think so, and no holy book has written it. Every holy book has emphasized on it. Maybe wordings are different, but emphasis on love and care is there in every holy book that is there. No, but we are doing the opposite actually. We um, don't practice it much, isn't it? I'm including me also in uh, when I say we. Our holy books are set aside. We don't read it and analyze it much because uh, the world is going on and one day we're going to die. That's it. Everybody knows that. So this is how. But it emphasizes, it shows you, it teaches you something, okay? Next is social unity. Religion gives, shows you unity. Now, we shouldn't be fighting with other, other religions. In my opinion, why should you fight? What is the need to fight with another community? After all, they are, they are practicing their religion. Uh, let them. They are doing their customs. Let them do. You do yours. Okay, let them do and that person let him do or his or hers, doesn't matter, just appreciate for what they were doing. If you cannot participate in what they are doing, just get away from there, that's it. Okay, so every religion tells us that we have to be united, but in the modern world, uh, if you can see each one community is fighting with the other and there's so much of anger, so much of violence, how can we stop it? We can stop by only thinking that. We shouldn't be doing it. If, if every each person thinks that we shouldn't be doing it, we shouldn't be fighting, it will stop. Why will it not stop? It will stop in its own way. Though it may take time because now it has become a big issue, but we have to get it to the roots. We have to get down. We have to understand each aspect. Why are they fighting? For what are they fighting? Okay, destroy your uh, religious places, throw out your holy books, Okay, then uh, not allow anybody to do their festivals. Why, why should we do that? I want you to think students, I don't want you to have this thought in mind that my religion is supreme and other religions are bad. Please don't keep this thought in mind because uh, we, have, we have unity in diversity, that's what, we, that's what we believe in India and anybody has the right to practice any religion that you, that you want. It's laid down in the constitution. You can practice any religion you want. So you cannot question anybody of their religion. Okay, you cannot question anybody of why they are practicing it. And that is being learned in the family and it has come through ages. But they have a right to change it. Or they can, uh, they can uh, choose not to follow any religion. Okay, that kind of practice is also prevalent. 
you choose not to practice any religion. You stay on your own, but only believe in uh, human relationships. So that is how. I, want, I don't want you to please remove this thought from your mind that my religion is supreme. No. Uh, my religion is never supreme. Everybody's religion is on an equal basis, equal status. Though we speak different languages, though we celebrate different festivals, though we uh, say our prayers differently, but after all, what matters? If our religion mattered to us so much, nothing in the world would take place like this, okay? Religion shouldn't come in place of your decisions, of anything that you want to help others. Religion should not play a role. No, religion is you, you, you practice it, but don't make others uh, uh, sad for what you are doing or don't hurt others for everybody's religion is important to them they will practice it you practice yours and be peaceful that's it okay that's that's what it is teaching us it's teaching us you stay united you stay together when you stay together it's there's peace and harmony okay love thy neighbor why should you love thy neighbor when you love thy neighbor there is peace there is harmony there is unity there and if you're only fighting for, okay, you don't eat this, you don't eat that, and you wear this, you wear that color, you wear this color, you don't take your uh, festivals on this road, you don't do that, we are not going to allow you to bust crackers. Celebration is needed, right? Celebration is needed in some way, but not to harm others. You can celebrate it on your own, inside your house, celebrate. Uh, do your any festival that you want, anything for that matter. You do 100 festivals in a year, but do it on your own, don't harm anybody else. So that's what, that's how we, that's how we bring social unity. Uh, protection of values, okay. Religion is teaching us a lot of values, that is we have to be honest, we have to be truthful, we have to have a lot of patience, we have to care, we have to love, okay. And it teaches to be non-violent, that is not have violence, but we have a lot of violence. Okay, we have a lot of violence. Now, when can we have that non-violence? When you and I, okay, leaving apart all those people who are fighting, we who can get and understand information, stop doing it. The next years that are come, going to come will be peaceful in case everybody thinks in the same way. See, it is not that one or two people here in the local community think like that. Everybody must think. Everybody must do. Only when everybody tries to take that step, then it is possible. Because our, our country is so huge, it's so big. And if 10 of them out of that billion people there, it is not possible. So when India has diverse cultures, India has a lot of uh, diversity that is there. We have a lot of cultures, we have a lot of religions, lot of food habits that are there, different dressing styles. What is necessary we appreciate and accept everything that is in and around us. We may not be there in our native places, we may be going somewhere, we may be in other places. What's, what's wrong in learning their language? What's wrong in uh, uh, learning something that is learning something that you didn't know, maybe adapting to some food habits, learning to cook some new food of that area. So that's how you build your community, that's how you build unity. What's a loss? Nothing is a loss to you, you are learning a new thing after all, okay? Language or anything for that matter. Now, uh, every religion supports these values and that is how our life and our holy books are uh, emphasizing on. Next is social control. Social control is, um, though we have rules and regulations in the society, we believe that God is controlling, God is uh, present and uh, he takes on the role, but he'll only bless uh, if you do your hard work, okay, that, must, that you must remember. If you put in your hard work, if you're very sincere to uh, what you are assigned to or what you want to do, then God will surely bless you. But we cannot be praying like, okay, without doing anything, we cannot be saying, oh, please help me, no. He will never do it. Why should he do it? He will only bless only if your hard work is uh, fruitful. Now, when it says social control, it, uh, religion is also teaching us discipline. Okay, it's teaching us discipline, but we are acting as indisciplined people. Uh, yet, though it's written down, though it's put, we should put it into practice. Only when we put it into practice, the reality of what is written will uh, 
come into uh, being otherwise it will not so okay so you sh it teaches you to be disciplined you you have a lot of uh, civilized be a civilized person be people who have manners properly okay now this is how uh, we should us we see it's the last line is written beautifully here there is a need to understand this function of religion and stop hating other religions this is what i told you you must stop hating other religions why are you hating now i'll tell you one thing uh let me take uh now take religion a b c okay a religion thinks i am supreme i ours is the greatest and nobody can touch us and nobody can do anything to us a thinks like that now b doesn't like it okay c is not there in anything that is uh, just practicing it on its own and c is somewhere having friendships with both the religions and it's fine with it but b doesn't like what a does and people under b now people are fighting okay and people somebody from b who has gone to fight comes and tells their community see a religion a is not good they are like this and we have to fight for them we should not allow them to do this they are all all people are like that b tells his community now those people other people who are there at home or in his neighborhood who have not seen the fight who have not seen the violence still believe that a is bad we must stop doing this just because the tv shows it just because you hear it from somebody just because uh, there are a lot of posters put and there is everything in and around saying that that religion is like this that religion is bad people are throwing stones at each other people are killing each other we shouldn't be believing it okay never stop never hate them because of somebody else why should you hate now you may have a friend of a different religion will you hate that friend you won't so in some rare cases it happens like that where you still go on to hate any person you meet of that religion not right okay so you must stop hating religion and stop thinking bad because just because somebody else has told you you experience that person not all people are bad isn't it not on an overview nobody is bad but some situations make them so that's it okay uh, so this is how the functions of family religion and marriage are so with this we have finished the lesson students uh, we'll wind it up here today we'll get into a fresh lesson uh, in the next class okay a new lesson in the next class and that's what i had to discuss in this lesson social institutions thank you students very much for uh, listening we shall meet soon in the next class